I feel like BCS Theatre has become a brand of sorts. People have, <laughs> they have expectations. We have bring a spectacle to a small stage. When it came to selecting the fall drama, there's only one choice, really. It was gonna be Murder on the Orient Express. And to have a chance to perform one of Agatha Christie's greatest stories, I could not wait to tell the kids. Hello, folks, so that you too may yes! Guys, let me give you a simple explanation of Jitterbug Fundamentals. <laughs> The more I talked to them about it that night, the people just got so excited for a chance to do something different. This all started in the summer of 2019. My wife, Jamie, and I had kind of started talking about what if we did Murder on the Orient Express? So I got like a perusal script, went on vacation to Universal Studios. On the flight, we were reading through it and we were just kind of talking about ideas of what you could do with the stage. And I remember we ate at this restaurant called the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and you walk in there and you're just kind of wowed by it. It's like completely steampunk themed and it's huge. We had kind of thought, what if we put like a layer of this kind of style of steampunk through it? And that was the dream. It was a brand new show on the market. You could license it uh, as of that year. But the problem was it was already up for grabs. It prevented us from getting the rights. It prevented us from doing the show. It all worked out because we went a different direction. I chose to do a comedy, News is Off, and it was a blessing. We were not supposed to do Murder on the Orient Express that year. Thankfully, we got the rights and we revealed it and people couldn't have been happier about it. You're gonna have to get used to this. This is my camera, it's for the video blogs. Doc documenting, I make a behind oh, the scenes. you don't know about the video blogs? No, I've seen everywhere. She lived under a rock. Yeah, I practically <laughs> have. <laughs> Hello, we're here at the read-through of Moto, no. Murder on the Orient Express. Very excited to be here. We're trying to Zoom call in uh, one of our cast members who is in India. Bonjour. Hello. Act your hearts out. I mean, that's what we're here to do tonight, so just have a blast, okay? As the Bible says, <laughs> if Moses doesn't know the answer, ask the concierge. <laughs> there was a man in my room. He ran off. I'm sure of it. Which way did he go? These are the facts. Say close. Say spinny. End of play. Everyone was just like, the script. I'm like, I know. <laughs> in the beginning of rehearsals, we had a lot of discussion about characters and I would I would challenge the cast members to go home and read their script and come back the next day having learned something new about their character we would we would open up discussions about it um, I would pose questions that they would have to answer I don't want you I don't want your cake you know what I mean take a pause there walk back at him I want nothing monsieur except to leave. Drew once pointed how different Poirot was to, say, Sherlock Holmes or Shirley Holmes. He's very good, bad, no in between. And over the course of the story, of course, it gets more gray and gray. But Sherlock Holmes is already like that. Plus, I'd also say, Poirot is a lot more charming. We're also known as Carter's Angels. Hi, camera. Carol, you should sing something. Ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> One of the challenges that we came across was blocking for scenes that happen on a train. You feel free to move about as you wish, but then when you get on stage, you realize how much less space you have. And with this set design, we're creating less space on purpose. It's a train. There should be the awkward oh, let me squeeze by you kind of aspect of that blocking because you want it to feel claustrophobic. He was clearly shocked, which is why he did not fight back. What I think makes the mark of a great actor is someone who can take whatever, everything that's in the material and then add to it, fill in the blanks. So the more choices you can make about your character, the more ownership you have over it and the more it belongs to you. The other challenge that we had to get used to was zooming people into rehearsals. I mentioned the fact that we had one of our cast members who was still in India. It was a very interesting process to learn how to direct via you know, Zoom. 
Um, but we did get around it. We did figure it out. So Casey, you are gonna be somewhere over there. <laughs> Pretend I'm Mary. Oh my God! She's not in here. Try Ratchet's room. Mary! Push! Push her! I'm trying. Go! Go! I'm making up for all the times that I have not showed up for set day. I was about to say. <laughs> Look at Carter. Muscle man. Good job, Carter. We are clearing out storage in this barn. We're also clearing out the prop closet and gutting it for so it works better for our current show. And in the meantime, some dads are tinkering away at the most ambitious set we've ever done. Rocking the shorts. It wasn't too long into the process when I decided that what I really needed to make this possible was a rotating stage. It has been fun, it has been challenging. Yeah. But I've enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> you always says, oh, this one will be easier. It's always harder. I had never said this one would be easy. <laughs> never said this would be easy. Where we ended up landing was that we could achieve a 20 foot circle. This is pretty darn cool. There's one night for rehearsal where we moved to Ruth's room. Uh, there was some building happening, and it was kind of nice because we just kind of focused on our craft without that distraction in this room. And you know, we really got to the bare bones of like you know, the heart of these characters and stuff. And we were doing our most emotional scene in the whole show. I don't want to spoil it. Um, and then when we walked back into the gym, the stage was done. I mean, the, the rotating stage was done. Not the whole set, obviously, but the stage was done and like there was an eruption of like applause and hate. And it was just like, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe that we got this done. Like, this is ours. And it was so cool. We started incorporating everyone else into our rehearsals and went through the show a, a second time but now incorporating uh, these different characters that we'll see along the way. Meanwhile, in the background with all these things happening, there are you know developments with costumes and you have to kind of like juggle those things in rehearsal because you know it's just the way a show works sometimes. You wish you had all the time in the world to do everything all the way, but sometimes you have to multitask. I brought in a new team member, uh, Hannah Bostic, who is my script supervisor. It's, it's, it's amazing how freeing and liberating it is to not have a script in my hands when I can just focus on the acting while she's keeping their lines straight. I know I've already asked for a montage of me doing this, but here's the start. <laughs> We have a lot of fun in rehearsal. In fact, I wish I had the time to have more fun with them during rehearsals. Unfortunately, I'm directing everyone else. Good stuff. <laughs> Good job, Casey. Good there was a idea that we should pull off a steampunk style doing my research and everything, it proved to be quite a challenge to pull that off. Um, the 1930s is where our story takes place. The style is art deco. Things change and that's part of the creative process. During fall break, I didn't want time to go to waste. I wanted to work on the set. So we met a few times to uh, paint, to build.
heading is stencil for our beautiful walls right here. Um, I hope it looks okay. I wanted to go for wood paneling and um, I had seen this video online about how to do uh, a stain. Used foam board because that's what was used in the video. Turns out though, it's never ever, 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 ever going to dry. It was very discouraging because I had done this to 14 four by eight panels. This is like basically our entire set. It is Sunday, the last day of fall break, working on these walls. It has been a journey with these walls. It was actually a big thanks to Hannah Bradley who shared with me a wood grain technique that she had been learning in her one of her theater classes. And we took this wood grain brush and we started scraping it across and depending on how you rock it, you can get different shapes and everything and it lo looked convincing. I paint the border and then we set it up to dry and then after that it's going to go up on the wall and then we'll spray paint the gold stencil on. It's a process but the goal is after today to, oh my gosh! Carter tripped on the paint! <laughs> Carter, what have you done? <laughs> Incorporated our stage crew and getting Rachel back on board on the team was amazing. Just getting the crew to learn the show and getting the actors comfortable enough to run the show. It's uh, a process that we are still in right now, but what was an exciting highlight for that week was getting the cast in costumes, hair, makeup, taking some photos. That night was so fun. It's okay. I knew Kelly before this. Me loves Carolyn. What, what do you think about reading my hair half and half? They're burning their hair! Okay, now try to open. I can't. You can't open your eye. <laughs> Gosh, that's fabulous. Look at her, she's like, oh. <laughs> Look more menacing. <laughs> You're like, yay. <laughs> right there. Photoshop my teeth white, please. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Nikki. Where's the pizza? <laughs> Let's go. Here we have the first ever Cam Cam. <laughs> Murder on the Orient Express is famous because of the great characters that are in it. What happens when there's a murder and you're stuck on a train and on board you happen to have this brilliant detective who is here to find them out. I think it's just foam. Yeah, yeah. We'll polish it up. <laughs> 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 I'm so glad this is great. Oh man. Come on. Come on. Oh, shit. <laughs> we got it! Yeah! I was really proud of the work that we got done that day. I mean, the set was basically done. Vibin. Hey, Vibin? things are coming together. We're finally getting there. It's just a moment where you, you, you get chills down your spine. You think, you know what? My vision became real. This show has been just such a wonderful experience so far. I've grown incredibly close with my cast. This set is the coolest set we have ever built. The script, the material, the story is, is something that I care so deeply about, what it stands for. People are going to get lost in, these, in this show. They're, they're going to get attached to these characters. Um, they're going to feel like they're on a train with these passengers, like front and center, to live the greatest murder mystery of all time.